beauty for opportunity. The sun's last fiery rays painted the sky as Mira rapped gently on Ada's door. Ada's heart quickened with each knock, for she knew that this pivotal moment had finally arrived. Tabo is here, Mira whispered, her eyes alive with a shared secret. He wishes to meet you tomorrow. Ada's pulse raced with anticipation. Tales of Tabo's powerful connections and the limitless opportunities he could bestow upon her swirled in her mind, kindling a fervent hope for a future far brighter than her humble present life. Ada's roots ran deep in the unforgiving soil of a poverty-stricken family and village. She held a fierce resentment for the chains of want that had ensnared her family for generations. Her yearning for a life beyond their meager existence burned as an unquenchable fire within her, sparking a vow to break free from the clutches of deprivation. In Ada's eyes, her beauty was not just a feature, it was a priceless asset she was determined to leverage. The village, steeped in penury, could never offer the life she believed she deserved, no matter how tirelessly she toiled. The next day, as the sun climbed the sky, Ada stood at the agreed meeting spot, feeling a mix of nervousness and excitement. Tabo arrived, and her first impression was of a charming and handsome young man. He was immaculately groomed and exuded an air of affluence that seemed to surround him like an aura. Ada couldn't help but think that this could be her gateway to prosperity. Hello, Ada, Tabo greeted her with a warm smile as they exchanged pleasantries. His voice was smooth, like honey, and Ada found herself captivated by his presence. They sat down on a weathered log nearby, the atmosphere charged with possibilities. Tabo acknowledged that he had spoken to Mira and that he was here to offer his help. His words held a tantalizing promise of a new life, of prosperity and opportunity. I've assisted many girls like yourself in starting a new life in the city, he explained, his words dripping with a mysterious allure. And I'm always on the lookout for girls with potential, like you, Ada. Ada couldn't help but feel a pang of curiosity mixed with caution. She wondered what Tabo gained from helping girls like her, what lay beneath the surface of his charming exterior. Her excitement was tinged with suspicion as she leaned in and asked, So, how does this work, Tabo? Tabo's eyes gleamed with a hidden knowledge, and a secretive smile danced on his lips. Ah, Ada, it's quite simple, he replied, his answer vague and shrouded in ambiguity. We'll discuss the details soon. For now, just know that opportunities await those who are willing to seize them. Ada sensed that there was more to Tabo's offer than met the eye, but her burning desire for a life beyond the village made her hesitant to press further. She nodded, masking her reservations with enthusiasm, all the while unaware of the enigmatic path she was about to tread in the shadows that concealed Tabo's true intentions. Chapter 2 Whispers of Uncertainty Over the course of the next week, Mira met with Tabo twice, each meeting weaving a more enticing narrative of the city's allure. Tabo painted vivid pictures of a cityscape teeming with life, a place where Ada would be housed with other girls, where job opportunities were abundant, and where wealthy men were known to lavish their affections and money on beautiful girls like her. Ada couldn't help but feel flattered by the possibilities he presented. However, amidst the enchanting tales, there were moments that left Ada feeling uneasy. In the midst of their conversations, Tabo would casually mention clients who had refused to pay and the violence that had befallen them. These abrupt transitions to darker subjects left Ada taken aback and confused. She had envisioned a life in the city where she would live with a few girls temporarily until she found her a job or wealthy suitor. These unsettling stories didn't align with her idyllic fantasies. Tabo insisted, in all their meetings, that she must not disclose his involvement and that no one should know they were traveling together to the city. He even advised her to tell her parents that she was embarking on this journey alone to seek greater opportunities. The morning of her departure Ada's heart fluttered with a blend of excitement and trepidation. Her parents, a humble and hard-working couple, looked upon her with pride, their eyes brimming with love and hope as they bid her farewell. She had not revealed her destination to them, for in her heart, she genuinely did not know where she was headed exactly. She couldn't bear to burden them with the uncertainties of her quest, and so she simply promised to make them proud and find a better life. Her dear friend, Mira, stood by her side unable to meet Ada's gaze. There was an unspoken heaviness in the air, a sense of secrecy that lingered between them. Tabo's car idled nearby, an elegant and impressive vehicle that exuded an aura of sophistication. The scent of rich leather enveloped Ada as she climbed into the passenger seat, a promise of the opulent life that lay ahead. Tabo, the man who held the key to her dreams, greeted her warmly with a reassuring smile. The journey was smooth, the road stretching before them like a ribbon of endless possibilities. They made several stops at gas stations, 
each one a brief interlude in their adventure. Tabo's generosity and thoughtfulness shone through, making Ada feel safe and cared for. He was a true gentleman, his charisma and charm putting her at ease. As they drove, Ada couldn't help but think, what could possibly go wrong on this promising path she had chosen to tread? Chapter 3, Shadows of Deception As Ada and Tabo's car entered the bustling heart of the city, Ada couldn't help but marvel at the urban sprawl that surrounded her. The towering buildings, the ceaseless flow of people, and the symphony of city life unfolded before her like a mesmerizing tapestry. However, Tabo's demeanor had shifted drastically. He had become strangely quiet and distant, his eyes reflecting a thousand unspoken thoughts. Ada sensed that he carried a heavy burden, hidden beneath the facade of charm and generosity that had lured her into this journey. Upon their arrival at a nondescript building, the city's cacophony enveloped them once more. Tabo's voice broke the urban symphony as he declared, We are here, gesturing toward a discreet gate guarded by two imposing men who seemed to stand sentinel, guarding it from prying eyes. Ada's heart raced, a cocktail of anxiety and anticipation coursing through her veins. She inhaled deeply, forcing a smile to her lips. Inside the building, the stark plainness of the exterior continued. A long corridor stretched before them, flanked by countless doors on either side. Tabo brought her to a stop at one of these doors and gestured toward it. This is your room, Tabo stated, his tone devoid of the warmth she had seen in him earlier. We will send someone to remove the possessions of the previous occupant. Ada's gaze remained fixed on Tabo, who had undergone a disconcerting transformation. His instructions were delivered with an ominous weight that sent chills down her spine. With a grave seriousness, Tabo concluded, do not talk to any of the girls around. You are required to be in your room at all times, and you will find everything you need in there. You will be receiving your first client today, be ready. With those foreboding words, Tabo retreated into one of the dimly lit corridors, leaving Ada alone outside her assigned room. The harsh reality of her situation was beginning to set in. She had ventured into this world with dreams of prosperity, only to discover that it concealed a dark and treacherous underbelly. Her thoughts circled back to the last time she had seen Mira, just before embarking on this perilous journey. Tabo had slipped money into her hand, and Mira had avoided Ada's gaze, a look of guilt shadowing her features. Ada had foolishly concealed her true destination from her family, and now she found herself ensnared in a world from which there seemed to be no escape. As Ada entered her room, it felt more like a prison cell than a place of opportunity. A single, high-up window cast feeble rays of light into the room's dimness. Her eyes couldn't help but be drawn to a rope hanging ominously from the ceiling fan, positioned menacingly above a solitary chair. The thought of the last girl's lifeless body hanging by a rope, hung in the air like a ghostly specter, a haunting reminder of the prison she was now confined to. She was acutely aware that if she succumbed to despair at this moment, the looming darkness might consume her entirely, leaving no path back to the light. Just then, the door creaked open, and the shadow of a man filled the room. Her first client had arrived, and Ada knew that she was now at the mercy of this unforgiving world, where the shadows of deception loomed larger than ever before. Thank you for watching our story, Beauty for Opportunity, and we hope you enjoyed it. What lessons did you draw from this story? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and be part of the tribe. Thank you for watching, The Tales of the Savannah. We will see you next time, in the Savannah.